SEO is a strategic focus. SEO, and you've seen this on your side as well, SEO doesn't mean that every single article is going to rank high on your website. Articles have different purposes. Some articles have a purpose of documenting that there was a podcast episode. Other articles have the purpose of bringing in the right people to turn into leads by downloading an ebook. Other articles have the purpose of just sitting there for social media engagement, but were never intended for search. James Schramko here. Welcome back to Superfast Business. Uh, this is episode 905. And today we're going to be talking about getting customers chasing you because so much time and effort and energy is wasted on you know, going out there trying to get customers to come to us, like shouting from the rooftops and it, it can be exhausting and, or we have a business that's completely dependent on paid traffic, which is risky. Of course, for this kind of topic, I've brought along my organic SEO friend, Gert Malik. Welcome to the call. Thank you very much, James. We've had you on this series many, many times. We, we've got our own series together on this show because SEO is... Um, of course, one of my soft spots, I've, I started with SEO. Originally, I bought my own domain name so that I could outrank the IMDB listing for my name when I was an actor. <laughs> so SEO, is, it was at the very, very start for me with my online journey, but this is, I'm talking 2005. These days, we've partnered up. Uh, we talk a lot about SEO. You've grown your business substantially in the last few years. When I speak to you about business and your team. I recognize a lot of the names. They used to work in my SEO business. So it's like we're still in the game just with a different guy fronting it. And the thing is you're really good at this SEO stuff. You've been doing it for even longer than I had. And the one thing that you've done particularly well is you've you started developing out your app to make it much easier for your clients to understand where they can do things to get improvements. But just before we kick off, I want to say like the stuff we've been doing has uh, been incredible. Uh, we should celebrate this, but recently you helped us navigate to position number one for a phrase that um, picks us up clients uh, who are looking for a particular thing that we do and we teach this and it's a very, very good direct match for my coaching capability and my skill set and you've got us up to there, position number one and this is a perfect example of what we're talking about today. Someone's going off to Google searching for a thing we appear number one they come to us so because of the pre-work we've done they're coming to us they're coming into our funnel they're opting into our material or buying our course or perhaps getting coaching and so just first off thank you secondly let's just talk about that let's sort of have a look at the lie of the land at the moment when people come to you how often is it that they already have people coming to them on tap or is that what they're trying to achieve First of all, I'm happy with that we can give back the favor. You have been instrumental in growing our team and informing us how to set up the right systems, etc. So definitely a big thank you back to you. I'm happy to now see selectively things working really, really nicely and essentially achieving what, like you asked, actually um, many, many clients are searching for. So many clients come to us that have been very successful on Facebook ads, for example, have been growing their business with Google advertising, maybe display, maybe YouTube, but ultimately they claiming, obviously there are high ads costs. We just had the last quarter of 2021 and the last quarter, everybody who's running paid ads knows that the ad spend can go completely crazy. Some people even stop running ads, or have to stop running ads because they just can't make a positive return on investment in the last quarter. And this is where many people then turn to SEO and say, yeah, we, maybe we should check this out again because sometimes if Facebook ads can be really, really simple. I'm not saying easy, but a simple game where you put in a certain money, you get back more than that and you have a, a scaling business. But ultimately, then you have a Facebook shutting down your account or anything else happens that affects uh, how your ads are running or you have ad fatigue and you need to find the next trigger that actually works with your audience. Or if there's a software audience. update. You know, there's been a bit of a tug of war happening. There's an Apple update that caused a lot of problems. I was just speaking to someone today actually who has an agency and he said it was it was tough. It was really tough. They had to make a lot of changes. Now, I think there's absolutely a case for paid traffic and there's a case for putting it across multiple platforms and we talk about paid traffic a lot. But what I think is really the big point here is 
people who have a great paid traffic campaign and it's working really well, which is ideal, usually ignore SEO. That's really the big point. And what I've consistently done, and, and through your help, of course, is we have sort of crossed that challenge that usually presents itself is, and that is that we are prepared to have an investment for the long haul. As you know, like because you, you operate hand in glove with my own team, I pay people in my own team to do our SEO point work uh, because as an agency, you know, you can do a lot of the stuff but you still at some point probably need the business owner to at least give you access to something or to make a change that you suggest unless it's like completely hands-on for some people and maybe it is, I'm, I'm not sure. But in my case, I pay the wages, I pay my team and I'd be paying an SEO contractor to get the information on what we should do but you need to invest up front. But the, the benefit of that, of course, is that I have a high profit margin business now. I don't really need paid traffic. Pretty much my only cost is my team wages and some software, okay, and, and a couple of contractors here and there for things that we need. So it's a great situation to get to but that's what the end goal looks like. Let's just go back to that coal face. Like someone's w watching this video and they think, okay, my paid traffic's a bit up and down or they've completely stopped. What sort of um, barriers do you think are there for someone when they think, oh, SEO, I've got to pay up front, I've got to put some resource into this? There's definitely probably more complexity involved than, uh, in, in people's minds than it actually is. So many people come to us and say, look, I really don't, know if i should really start with this seo thing we have someone who runs our ads and this works a little bit better a little bit worse but it does bring us clients so they really want to get some information how this will actually work and the way it really works so what i tell them is look you need to have someone who can dedicate resources to this project ideally you have at least an assistant or a writer or someone who can maintain your website and work hand in hand with us and with my team we sometimes handle the entire execution for clients, but then still need someone who can approve content, who can give us information. I was yesterday, had a workshop with a law firm, which is really not necessarily our industry to know how a law in, the, in California, for example, works specifically. So we really need, I call once in a while, we need some feedback. We need someone who can essentially work with us and where we can either guide their process or get some guidance from them in order to work their SEO. But there's definitely a lot of doubts involved in what it actually means to run an SEO campaign. And we definitely do a lot of upfront education about this process, which is just something that takes a while to start running. So we are very big on momentum. It is going to take some time to build up a momentum where you then see things are actually moving. It's like starting to push a car, for example, and it's just goes very, very slowly in its millimeters and then suddenly it's in motion and it doesn't, it's not uh, that exhausting anymore to move this another meter ahead. It's a very similar situation we have with SEO. You just need to dedicate some resources, you need this going, but then you see Google picking up faster on new content, you see internal linking working out, etc. And this is then where the motivation kicks in, where people get really, really excited and then slowly also see those leads coming in, those sales coming in. And then it really gets fine. The thing about momentum is is um, an important one. I'd noticed a friend of mine, Pat Flynn, posted on something on Twitter the other day where he had noticed a post of his had slid off the first page and he went in and just made some changes and then it went straight back up the top. So if you've got things in motion and you've been over time building the right structure and getting your site to load quickly and you have some links coming back to your site. If you do make small changes, it can have dramatic impact. And that's what I've noticed with your inputs. You say, hey, this post here could be updated. We update it, boom, it goes to the top. But what's missing for most businesses, they're not actually keeping an eye on it. That's step one. Two, that they're not even thinking about it perhaps as part of uh, it's so powerful that it could actually replace their other traffic campaigns, but why not do it in addition to? That's really the thing. Why don't you talk me through the steps that people go through once they say, okay, I want to commit some resource to SEO but I'll, and I'm realistic that this might take some time to build momentum, but I'm excited about when we do have the momentum, how that will take the pressure off our 
feast and famine paid marketing cycle? We have a specific onboarding process we have refined over the over the years, really. And we spend a lot of time initially in getting really to know a customer's business uh, from the client's perspective. So ultimately, we are in search marketing, which means we need to know how their target audience searches. So if you're a law firm, we need to know how your future clients are going to search on the internet where they could come across your content and then make a decision to opt in for something, download something, get in touch with you. So it's very, very important that everybody on the team, and we are normally four to five people at least working on one project, everybody on the team knows exactly what such a target client is like, what they search for, how they ask questions on the internet. We do a lot of research there. And we have even a couple of calls with every new client. When the first call, we make sure that we absolutely 100% understand who they are trying to target, which is sometimes a little bit differentiated. So it's really important to dive in deeply. On the second call, it's me explaining back to them what I understand that they are trying to achieve and how I think that our SEO strategy and what SEO strategy should be in order to reach those people in search. And once we're okay with this, then we have an overall strategic umbrella over the entire SEO strategy. And then we start what we call an Erica framework approach. And this is just a framework I've developed after a few years of refinement, uh, where we just make sure that every couple of weeks we touch upon everything that's important in SEO. And SEO is not just one thing and one title tag or one link or whatever. It's a whole series of things. It's very similar to the fitness status. When you go to a gym and the personal trainer makes your first assessment, they're not going to just tell you you should eat a carrot every day. They're going to see, look, it's nutrition, it's movement, it's what you drink, what you eat, when you eat, how you sleep, and give you a lot of things. And you need to do everything right in order to reach your fitness goals. SEO is very similar in this regard. Yeah, it's like it's, so you could say it's holistic. Absolutely. It's like that classic helicopter leadership thing where no matter where you're focused, they could come down and show you something that you're missing. <laughs> Having <laughs> someone on the team who has a framework that sort of captures the essence of it uh, is an important aspect of it and for us again the the way this looks like from our side is we're just cruising along nicely and then we get this little loom video pop up in our slack from get and he's showing us in just a minute or two here's what's happening this is what you should do about it and here's an update on the results that from the last time he did this and then my team say thanks and then they go and do it and then we get the result It's, it's basically a seamless ongoing operation and that's really what I want to impress it's like you said it's not a one shot thing and it's not a all in one area focus so and I see people do this perhaps when they have a misunderstanding of what SEO is they just like okay oh I just want to go on a link buying program or I just want to pay someone to write articles or they say I'm just going to get my sites of navigation redone and speed it up but these things in isolation might get some impact, but when you do them as a concert, you get this symphony of results. And we've been through that. I mean, I remember my team sped up our website and it got really fast and then they redid the content and it floated back up to the top. And then over time, people even want to link to it, which is great. So you get start to see the benefit of this. But the other thing is on the long-term side of it, it's very easy just to say, well, we've sort of done all that and then forget it. And that's, that's where um, it's always good to, like a garden, you want to keep maintaining it or the weeds will come and, and grow over and, and some plants will choke the others and some will get sunburnt and die away. Like you've got to keep maintaining it. Absolutely. What we very often hear from clients is uh, once they see this momentum going, they say, look, finally, we see something is happening in SEO because SEO is usually an on and off thing in a company where they say, okay, now we have some free capacities. Let's do something for our SEO. And they pull themselves a little bit back up with a little bit fresh content, etc. But then they fall down again because their focus shifts. There are never dedicated resources. There is never someone assigned on the team who just looks after their SEO and makes the right calls. And then we see a lot of resources and a lot of money actually being wasted. Because when I ask clients what they have been doing in the past for SEO, for their website, Many, many clients point me to the WordPress plugin they're using and look, every box is ticked and everything is green on my Yoast or my Rank Map plugin or whatever. SEO is just really much more than that, right? SEO is a strategic focus. SEO, and you've seen this on your side as well, 
SEO doesn't mean that every single article is going to rank high on your website. Articles have different purposes. Some articles have a purpose of documenting that there was a podcast episode. Other articles have the purpose of bringing in the right people to turn into leads by downloading an ebook. Other articles have the purpose of just sitting there for social media engagement, but were never intended for search. But what's really important is to figure out which ones are those individual articles, and this might only be a handful on a website, that actually drive the right people in. And this is when our application that we have been developing for quite a few years now comes in, where we just strip everything out from Google Analytics and Google Search Console that we don't need, and we just focus on the places. Where do people come into the website? How do they convert? And then it's really, really easy to filter those articles out that actually drive those conversions, that are actually bringing in those right people. And then we can, in the application now, click on those URLs and see what are actually the terms people use to reach those websites. Can we create more content around this? If this term brings us the right audience, maybe we should also address it on social media. Maybe we should run ads to this term as well in order to broaden the audience and to put more pillars down to it. So the focus is really identifying what is really important for conversions and having someone who monitors this consistently and points you to those five, six, 10 URLs that actually make a difference in your business. Yeah, that was shocking to me actually how much of our content was not useful uh, that uh, didn't get views or whatever and then, then we had to prune and cut back and then make feature posts. But again, when you understand what it is that you're trying to do and you've got someone who's showing you the data, it makes sense and, it, and the, the results speak for themselves when we make those changes and then they pop back up. It was always just sitting there it just needed change. One of the great examples was an article that I think was probably nine years old that you said, hey, this one gets a fair bit of traffic, you should update it. And so all I did was make a Loom video of me reviewing my nine-year-old article, maybe it was eight years, I can't remember, something like that, saying how did this age, you know, sort of like a YouTuber video, like how, did the, how does this article stack up now in the current year? And then I made that video and we put it back on the page and then re-updated for... 2021, I think it was when we did this. And it just, it moved the whole article again. It just gave it a shot in the arm and took it straight back up because it was like fresh and like Google wants to reward it, but they were probably sitting there saying, come on guys, it's a bit out of date. We love this article, but we have to put others in front of it because it's not as new or fresh. So when we updated it, uh, we even updated the the date of the article. That was one of the the Interesting fact, it's because it popped it back up in my podcast number series and uh, confused some of my listeners. But, but the funny thing is some of my listeners are like, hey, I love this retro blast from the past post, you know, like, like I see what you did there. And that was sort of actually an unintentional scenario, but it, pretty cool. So where to from here? Like we've got this concept that, hey, customers could actually come to us on an ongoing basis and all we need to do is just say we're in it for the long haul. We need to, to do a little audit. We need to get things cooking and then we need a person in our team or some resource to be able to effectively actually take advantage of all of these things on an ongoing basis. But how rewarding can it actually be if we get this in place? It's definitely extremely rewarding once you see it that you start ranking for, not only ranking for certain terms that are interesting for your industry, uh, but actually those rankings bring in traffic that then converts the traffic that requests a proposal traffic that wants to get in touch with you traffic that books in a call with you or actually makes a sale will work a lot with uh, shopify sites these days as well this is when it gets really really rewarding when you see for example we just were working on a shopify site that was pretty much only listing products and we started bringing some more context to those products with descriptions with more informational kind of content as well then suddenly you bring, uh, see people do their research and then from this research point make the purchase decision. This is a very big point, for example, for e-commerce sites. So it's just really all about, first of all, making sure that we have a status quo on the website. This is usually done with an audit uh, here where we just go through the website, make sure we have a solid technical foundation and no roadblocks really for Google to index and properly understand how the site is structured. And then from there, really start 
building out this momentum, make sure that we have the data tracking in place, uh, can actually understand what kind of uh, traffic brings certain kind of results. Sometimes it's even us suggesting some lead magnets, making some suggestions for opt-ins in order to drive more of the right traffic to your eBooks, for example, etc. So we very often also give some some conversion uh, optimization tips. Just did this on a website, and they immediately jumped like thirty percent in conversions just by putting a few extra buttons here, here and there, and making just sure that they actually leverage the content they have or built up over time. I think they're the ones that I like the most. Is when you say, "Hey, you should." consider doing this or do that or this thing you've got here if you just change that that's where we've had the biggest results with the the least amount of effort where you've looked at the information see something obvious that we're missing and then point us in that direction and then my team and i create it and that, that's done so it's it's worked great i wish this for everyone they could have inbound leads coming from their seo work of course you're over there at seoleverage.com someone wants to get in touch with you get uh, go through the, the system, the onboarding, the getting hooked up to the app, have you working on their account. That's the place to go. You and your team, of course, ever-expanding team, really getting great results for everyone who's gone over there. So I appreciate it and um, thank you for coming along and, and sharing again. Thank you so much for having me, James. It's always a pleasure. Discover how to build your business super fast. Check out superfastbusiness.com. Thank you.